Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Memes of the Week. You can support this channel through the PayPal and subscribe star links below as my YouTube channel has been demonetized. And I don't know how long I can keep making this series of videos. Any and all donations are helpful. Also, before I get on with the memes, first a word from today's sponsor, Hawk and the Good. His channel is for MGTOW men looking for philosophy and purpose in today's soy society. The number one question guys ask me is how do I find meaning and purpose in life? And Hawken has you covered with politics and current affairs, mixed in from a male perspective. Visit his YouTube channel and see for yourself. Sponsor link is down below. Now on with the memes. Number one shows us that men aged 15 to 24 since around 2007 or 8 have spent almost two hours a day on average playing video games. That's gone up rather steeply lately. 8% are gaming for at least six hours a day. Even Elon Musk says that some games are better than sex. This other graph shows us how virginity in males has also increased since 2008 as well, for those between the age of 18 and 30. But apparently 98% of those men end up losing their virginity by the time they turn 25. Supposedly. I don't know if I believe it. Up next is an article from the UK Sun where a single mother says she can't afford to buy her son a birthday or Christmas present. Yet she still has money to dye her hair red and get giant eyelashes glued on her face. What about using her child support money on the kid instead of looking pretty? Then again, how is she supposed to meet and have a Chatosaurus fall in love with her and accept her kid if she doesn't look her best while showing her breasts? Number three, men, what's stopping you from sitting like this? Oh, that's right. Having a girlfriend or wife that'll lose respect for you and leave you if you do. Here's a picture of Pierre Polyver, the opposition leader, and it looks like he doesn't have a problem man-sitting or skipping legs day. Justin Skippy Trudeau must be channeling his Pee Wee Herman energy. He should get a pair of shoes like the ones that Paul Rubens wore. Rest in peace, you pedo Pee Wee Herman. Moving on, we have Gary Gygax. His wife was convinced that he was having an affair, so she followed him into the basement and burst into the room to find him and his friends drawing maps out for a little old game that Gary would go on to invent called Dungeons & Dragons. Maybe she was the real inspiration for the dragon, and she forced him into the basement or dungeon and he used his nerd skills to draw his way out of his marriage. Who knows? Number five is the so-called hot chick from high school that's now ready to give you a chance. Women like her are always popping up to see what simps have made the big bucks out there in life and try to take those now that they're all used up. Some guys get nostalgic for video games and toys. Others still get nostalgic for women that they were attracted to in their youth. Nostalgia is one hell of a drug, and this woman looks like she knows a lot about drugs too. Up next, we have Penguina, telling everyone that the man she's looking for needs to be at least six foot three and make at least two hundred thousand dollars a year. But what man would go for a woman shaped like a bowling pin? This is what 95 percent of American females are on their way to looking like. Increasingly they want a man that's six feet tall earning six figures, yet they offer you nothing. Why do you think the popularity of video games just keeps going up and up? Number seven, here's something to ponder. There are 20 million women between the ages of 18 and 30 in America. Apparently, there are 4 million women in that age range that did or still do work in the sex business in one form or another. That means that one out of every five women in America under the age of 30 is or was a spicy content producer or prostitute. Why do you think that now the most popular thing for high school girls to mention is their dream job these days as lonely fans model? Moving on, everyone always wants introverts to go out and socialize with people outside their comfort zone. Meanwhile, when you do that, you're usually an extrovert and you have zero idea that the person you're trying to help come out of their shell is actually more comfortable in it. Western culture praises extroverts because they're more likely to spend money being social and keep the economy running. You can't milk much money out of someone that's happy sitting home alone. Number nine, what do you do when you have a woman out for dinner and all she does is sit on her phone? If it's a first or second date, odds are she's not into you, and it's over. She's probably talking to the Tyronosaurus that's going to savage her after you feed her. What you do is you kindly claim you're going to the bathroom, secretly pay half the bill back in the kitchen somewhere and leave before she knows what's going on. And you pretty much leave her with her half of the meal expense. If it's your girlfriend or wife, then Lord have mercy on your soul. Up next is an article saying that divorced parents, and what they actually mean is divorced dads with little to no contact with their children are lonelier and less satisfied with their lives. Of course they are. They invest a tons of time and money only for their child's mother to turn them against them. Having kids does not guarantee that you will have a relationship with them. Number 11 illustrates that point perfectly with a woman that demands child support from you or you're going to jail and you won't be able to see her kids. 
narcissism is rising in women, and what better captive supply than your own children as a wayman? Remember what Terrence Pomp always says, latex saves paychecks. Remember every time there's a responsibility, it's the husband's kid. But every time there's a benefit, it's her kids. Number 12, I guess this is what happens when you forget to turn the flash off your camera and women notice you've taken a picture. But let's get real here. The woman in the underwear is interested in getting male attention from that cameraman or some other men in the room. Otherwise, she wouldn't be wearing pantalones that allow you to see the underwear underneath. She's just pretending to look confused and pretending not to know why anyone would want to take her picture. Moving on is one that you guys confusingly clicked on. Possibly to get a clearer look at the skittles in her skillet and the balloons on her chest. Either that or they're Fruit Loops. The gas isn't even on in the stove and she's probably taking a selfie to show everyone how hard she works in the kitchen. Growing up, my mom spent all day in the kitchen preparing food for me. But as a man, I only spend about 45 minutes a day preparing my three meals. Maybe she's frying her antidepressant pills. Who knows? But there's no need for that as she can pretty much wash them down with some nice affordable Bud Light these days. Number 14, I guess a million dollars isn't all that much anymore. Even with a PhD and respectable job. If you can make her lady bits tingle, it doesn't matter how much your pockets jingle. So it looks like the guy that wrote this is probably going to go back to his home country and live like a king with that million bucks. At the least, a traditional gold digging horse will value his money back in his old country while pretending to like him. He could of course stay where he is and just go his own way. But I guess the thirst is real. Up next is an article about how men can build their own AI girlfriends. You know, when they become reality, women will petition the government to ban them like they did when they tried to ban alcohol. Except this time, I don't think men are just going to allow sex bot prohibition, but we'll fight to keep them. If there's only one issue that can unite men against real women, it's our future love for the fake ones. Women are weak and they need us for attention or they fold like a cheap suitcase. Number 16 is what happens when a man tries to photograph an object versus when a woman tries to photograph it. She, of course, is the object, and the object in the background is just there to elevate her status and make her look more base than she really is. How else would they get their social media following unless they did this sort of tomfoolery? Moving on, what would you actually do if you were out for dinner with your girl and your homie sent you this picture? First, you know where her appetite for a triple helping of everything and that restaurant is coming from. That's when you show her the picture, pay for the meal, and leave. Someone else on Twitter says to take her to the motel, take the same picture, and then say goodbye that way instead. Number 18 shows you what would happen if only men voted in U.S. elections. There would be a Republican majority and America would look a lot more traditional and conservative as a result. If you want to sort this out, years ago I said that only net taxpayers should be allowed to vote, and they would be the real stakeholders in the economy. Forget about repealing the 19th. Just make votes tied to wages and taxes. Up next is the discount Snow White from Disney at the left, and the AI-generated Snow White on the right. The one on the left will probably cost more than $100 million to make, while the one on the right is just freely generated with a second-hand AI. This madness will soon end as AI starts to make our movies, and there'll be unlimited supply of AI-generated films, and Disney will finally be dead. Number 20 is the problem of toxic masculinity. Funny how it was never a problem before when fathers were in the household. Maybe toxic masculinity is caused by the fact that around 50% of boys have 100% influence at home and 80% influence at work and school, and that there are no real men to teach them how to be non-toxic. But women will never admit to that. In fact, toxic masculinity is caused by women. Remember that 90% of people in prison are raised by single mothers. Where did their toxic masculinity come from? Number 21, we have a woman that won the lottery and then divorced her husband. Later on, that was discovered and then she was forced to give all of that money to her ex-husband as part of their divorce proceedings. This is a rare and beautiful outcome. People wonder why she didn't have to only pay him half. That's probably because she already got to keep 70-80% to of their net assets for when they were husband and wife. A man wins money and is grateful to spend it on his family. A woman wins money and she's happy to break up her family. Moving on, we have someone saying something I've been talking about for many years now. That is that women have now replaced religion for men, and most of us worship at the Church of Cooch. They are expected to kneel and give gifts to your female god. Saying something bad about women is considered blasphemy in the world of the Cooch. I'll tell you what, though. I can't help but reading this in Shaggy's voice. Number 23 is a Turkish guy thinking the girl he's talking to is Russian, and then tells her to come to Turkey because they support Russia. She corrects him by saying that she's from Ukraine. If she was into him, she wouldn't have said anything at all. She would have just come down there if it was worth it physically. Instead, Buddy just keeps on simping by saying that Turkey also supports Ukraine. So which is it? 
the bottom line is Turkey will support whatever it has to to get into a woman's pants. Up next, Singapore has executed the first woman in almost 20 years for having over 31 grams of heroin. She is the first woman in the state to receive the death penalty since 2004. But would this even be an issue if it was a man sentenced to meet his maker? I wonder how many men were executed there since 2004. Dozens of men and only one female, perhaps. Females most affected. But the great part is that they now practice equality in Singapore. The last one is number 25 and it shows a woke big bad wolf that tells Little Red Riding Hood to stop body shaming her for her big teeth and hair all over her body. I guess that's how she discovered that she actually has a transvestite grandfather. The next question would be, Grandma, why do you have such a huge clit? Grandma would then say to boink you with it. So that's it for another Memes of the Week. Remember, I make these for free, so donate if you can at the PayPal and subscribe star links below for more content like this. Also, give me a thumbs up, because it really helps in the algorithm. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.